Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA A Plus Certification Training Course on Troubleshooting Storage Devices. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements from our 22702, our practical application exam, section 1.2, where we need to be able to detect problems, troubleshoot, and repair and replace components such as, in this case, storage devices. We're going to go through everything we need to know when we're troubleshooting those storage devices inside of our computer. Whenever we turn on our computer, well, this is a bad situation to be where we boot it up, it goes through the normal BIOS post, we see the memory inside of our computer, and then we get a beep that says there's no, dev no boot device available, or it can't find any hard drive, or it can't find a device to boot from. Every BIOS is a little bit different on the memory and the, the information that it shows up on our screen. It may say that there's a primary master hard disk error, for instance, like this, and it says press 1 to resume. And we push F1, and it still doesn't boot. It may be that the hard drive has failed completely. But before we rule uh, exactly that that's the case, we should check a few things. First, check the cables. If a cable has, for some reason, popped out of your motherboard or popped off the drive, then your BIOS obviously isn't going to be able to check it. Or maybe the cable's a little bit loose. Make sure they're on there very well inside of there. Even if you are, haven't moved your computer, your system is always vibrating. There are fans inside of it. There are drives inside of it constantly moving. We want to be sure that there's no chance that a vibration might have knocked a cable loose. So check all of those. Also, look in the BIOS. See if it's able to actually see a hard drive there. If it doesn't see a hard drive, then perhaps it is the case that the cable is just a little bit loose. Or it may be that the situation is that somebody's changed a configuration in your BIOS and you didn't realize it. So if you ever see this situation where there is not a boot device available, you may want to check and just make sure the drive is really being seen properly by the BIOS. If you're installing a new drive and it tells you that a boot device isn't available, maybe just plug the cables in the wrong way. If you recall from our slides, a uh, previous video where we talked about the differences in PATA cables between a 40 wire and an 80 wire PATA cable, you know that there are differences on where you would plug in the drive. If it's a 40 wire cable, the master drive gets plugged in right in the middle of the cable. If it's an 80 wire cable that you're using and it's a higher speed connection, that is a master that's plugged into the end of the cable. So you may want to check and make sure that if you've put in a brand new drive and you're still not seeing it, just make sure you haven't plugged in the wrong cable into the wrong place. Track it back, follow it from your motherboard all the way to the end of the drive, and you should be able to tell if you've plugged the master drive into the correct port, the correct connection on this cable, depending on what type of 40 wire or 80 wire cable you happen to be using. Ultimately, you may need to run some diagnostic software. And usually, you can find some hard drive diagnostic software from the manufacturer of your hard drive. You can sometimes download that directly from their website, or they may include that software inside the box that you got your hard drive with. If you don't have that, you may want to consider getting the Ultimate Boot CD, which you can find at www.ultimatebootcd.com. And that has a number of absolutely free utilities on there that you can use for testing hard drives, memory, and, and much, much more. It's a great boot CD. If you're in a situation where you need to spend some money and find a professional piece of software that's able to recover information from a hard drive, you can absolutely and should consider SpinWrite from Gibson Research Corporation. Really, it's some of the best software that's out there for doing this kind of thing. You can find it www.grc.com or just Google SpinWrite. You'll absolutely find it there. Even if the drive isn't inside of your computer, there's still a number of things that you can do to help troubleshoot the external storage. First, you should look at the drivers. If you're using a FireWire connection to a storage device or a USB connection to a storage device, unfortunately, Windows doesn't do a great job sometimes at differentiating the different ports and the different controllers, and it may have a problem with that. So make sure that the drivers inside of your operating system are working properly as well. Check your device manager. It should be able to tell you if it even sees the external storage device. Not all drives and not all formats are alike. USB is, is a relatively common connection. Those are, are very common drives. These days, you plug in USB, and almost every time, your Windows system should be able to recognize it. If it's a CD or DVD, and especially one of the newer Blu-ray drives, Windows may not know about it right off the bat. So you may need some additional drivers to be able to use that external device properly. 
If you're using a USB key, a memory stick, for instance, those can be really, really easily overwritten. You want to be very careful about these external drives and the external USB. Sometimes you plug them in, you don't recognize that that's the drive that it's on. You might delete things accidentally. They're not perfect in the way that they operate. There are some great undelete programs that are available. Make sure you have on hand Recover, which is really a fantastic, absolutely free recovery program. You may have seen recovery programs that you can buy to, re to, to get those files back off of those USB keys. You don't need to spend any money. Just use Recover. It's a great program. Uh, either Google Recover, and I've got the website. You can go directly to piriform.com slash recover to download that. When all else fails on these removable drives, you may want to listen to it. If you hear nothing coming from the removable drive, that may be a bad sign. It's either not getting the power that it needs, or perhaps it's just a drive that's died. It's no longer available to you. You should be able to put your ear up to it and hear if it's doing anything. You don't want to pick it up and shake it around. You want to move your head down to that device. Try not to let those devices jostle around when you're using them. And when they're plugged in, after all, they're a hard drive. You should make sure that they are as still as possible when they're operating. Let's see what we can remember now with installing and configuring our storage devices. Our first question, what happens when a hard drive cable comes loose? How does your system react to that? Well, if it can't see the drive, then it certainly can't boot what's on there. And you may get a message from your BIOS saying, there's no boot device available. I can't do anything here. Second question is, what is a common physical misconfiguration of a PATA cable? Part of the problem here is that a 40-wire PATA cable and an 80-wire PATA cable have different connectors on there. There's a motherboard connection on 40-wire. The first port is the master, and the second port is the slave. And on the 80-wire case, you plug into the motherboard. The first port's actually the slave. And at the end of the cable is the master connection. Just make sure you're plugging in the master drive to the right cable port, depending on whether it's a 40-wire cable or an 80-wire cable. And our last question is, how can you check the health of an installed hard drive? Well, a very common way to do a health check is to run a diagnostics utility. You should grab the diagnostics from the hard drive manufacturer or grab a very open source or free version, maybe the Ultimate Boot CD, that has a number of hard drive diagnostics utilities on that. Well, that covers the requirements that we need for our 220.702 Section 1.2. We now can detect and troubleshoot problems that might occur on our storage devices. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free A-plus videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com. Thank you.